good morning all friends and family. This is Marlene with Building Zion and this is going to be I guess the second of the uh, cooking with food storage videos although I'm not going to be doing any cooking in this video and I'm going to tell you why. So it has been several months since I did only my very first cooking with food storage video and there is a reason for that. I decided that I was going to make um, sourdough bread and make a sourdough starter. Start it, do it all from scratch. I spent three months trying to make that sourdough starter and I'll tell you the story in a minute, but it failed horribly. And so, um, well, and then after that we had all kinds of things going on, like we're, we're working on a new adoption. So if any of you, and it's a foreign adoption, so if any of you have ever done an adoption or a foreign adoption, you know that it is crazy crackers when you start that. Not to mention just other things in life. So I didn't ever pick it back up. But I want to talk about um, some things that I learned, that I have learned in the past few months about... Uh, food storage and cooking and all that and I felt like it was valuable to share it with you before we dive back into the actual cooking. So the first thing is that um, you aren't going to be magically good at something the first time you try it as was evidenced in my sourdough bread making. So I looked online and I saw the sourdough recipe was oh easy. Two ingredients, flour and water. You put a cup of flour and a cup of water in a like a glass jar, cover it with a towel, stick it on your counter. It starts bubbling. You have to feed it every every day or twice a day, you know, depending on kind of the humidity and the heat in your house. But then in a few days you have your sourdough starter and you, you mix up some bread and you cook some bread and ta-da! I thought, you know, just within a couple weeks, I was going to be amazing at sourdough starters and sourdough bread. Well, not so. I started my sourdough bread starter and uh, put it on the counter. And the first day, it was bubbling like crazy. And I was like, oh, yeah, easy. I got this. This is going to be a cinch. Well, that was the only day it bubbled. After that, it didn't matter what I did to that sourdough starter. It would not bubble again. So I came to the conclusion, I thought, maybe, you know, I'm, I'm using flour that is 20 years old. It is the, the food storage flour from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints food storage cannery. Um, it's 20 years old. Maybe it just doesn't have the nutrition and oomph in it anymore to feed the bacteria, which is a second point I'm going to get to in a little bit. But going back to this one. Um, so I went to the store and I got some new fresh flour and started again after having started several times with the food storage flour. And so again, it, yeah, it would bubble, but it just wasn't quite actually getting to where it needed to be just on my counter. So finally, I thought maybe it just needs more heat. So I stuck it in the oven. I just turned the oven light on. I didn't actually turn the oven on. I just turned the oven light on covered it with a towel and put it in the oven. And it started working. It started bubbling. I was able to feed it. It was started going. After about a week, I thought, okay, you know, I can probably try making my sourdough bread. So I made the bread and the, the bread actually like hardly rose at all, just a tiny bit. But I thought, well, okay, I went ahead and cooked it. And it was just like this, this kind of real heavy sourdough brick. It was edible, <laughs> but it was, it was kind of a brick. I mean, if we had to eat it to survive, we would, you know. Um, so then, okay, well, I'm going to try again. Let's do this again. So I put it, um, you know, made up another starter, put it in the oven with the light on. <sighs> well, next thing I know, um, my husband... I had, I had left to go somewhere, and my husband was being super amazing, and he decided that he was going to make dinner. So I get home, 
and everybody's faces are just kind of like white and the house smelled kind of smoky and um and my husband is super apologetic he's like I'm so sorry I'm so sorry and I'm like oh my gosh what happened I'm thinking like something like got you know caught on fire well he he turned the oven on because he didn't realize I had my starter in the oven he just turned it on and the towel started smoking and it cooked the starter nothing caught on fire thank goodness he got it out before it actually caught on fire but uh yeah that sourdough starter was it was cooked it was gone <laughs> the towel was destroyed <laughs> and that's when I was like okay I need a break from the sourdough starter um but here's the point when you are starting learning new things. And this is something that I had to learn myself in this process. That you can't just look at something and be like, oh, that's so easy. I can just do that so quick. Okay, maybe some people are talented and they, they are able to pick up something super fast. That doesn't mean they're going to pick up everything super fast. It's their skills. They're things that we need to learn how to do. And we're going to fail. And that's good. <laughs> it's actually good. <laughs> it's like when you're learning to walk. Uh, how many babies, the first time they stand up and start walking, just start, they just do it. Maybe like one out of a million. And you're probably one of them like, oh, well, I knew. Okay, well, again, one out of a million. Most of the time, you're not going to get it the first time. And that is how we learn. And we fail and we say, okay, obviously I did that wrong. Let's tweak this, let's change this, and let's start again. So, be, we need to learn how to be like the babies. <laughs> we need to learn that when we fall down, we don't just sit there and cry and give up and say, it's too hard, I can't do this, I'm not talented at doing that, it takes too much time, whatever our excuse is. We need to get back up, and try it again and keep trying it until we get it and and we may not be like super amazing Martha Stewart at it you know some people just really are talented and they get it but other people don't and so oh my goodness I got my got my my little mini hi mini got my little mini on my lap she loves to just sit here I gotta put her down because I'm gonna walk around over here into my kitchen. And so let's see, I'll flip my flip. Well, if I can get my hand out of the way. <laughs> um, all right, so I'll have to flip my camera around. All right, here you go. You can see my oven. This time I've put a little sign that says sourdough and oven. So no one just turns the oven on and then inside here you can see my little light is on I'll pull it out my little light is on back there it gives just enough heat and it contains it in the oven that my sourdough and I just made this so of course like there's no bubbling yet but um, my sourdough can start actually growing and bubbling so let's put that back in there okay so the reason I feel like it was so important for me to talk about this about not giving up and trying again and not me just being like mm, I failed at that one Let's do something else Yes, I have three dogs in this house, plus a cat, so um, there will be animal barkings. <sighs> so the reason I feel like it is so important to talk about this is because the whole purpose for me doing these videos is, one, for me to learn how to cook with food storage, and two, to give um, some pointers and advice to share what I've learned with others. And one thing I've learned, like I've been talking about, is that you're not going to get it the first time. <clears throat> so, 
if we wait, if we wait around until there is an emergency, there is a problem, when we're actually having to pull out our food storage and use it, and then we think, oh, then I'll learn how to cook with it. Then I'll learn how to use it. It's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. You're not going to pull it out, all of the flour and the oats and the beans and the rice and the dehydrated onions and carrots and apples and pasta and, and just magically know how to make good meals with it. You're going to be sitting there mixing flour and water together and putting some sugar in it and saying, here you go. <laughs> Drink this. <laughs> And your family's going to be gagging and dying. <laughs> so, um, or you're going to end up just wasting a ton of food because you're going to destroy it. It's the same thing with gardening or, or any other kind of skills. If you don't practice now, figure out how to do some of those things now, when the time of necessity comes, you're going to have no clue, no clue how to do it. And so it's got to be something that you're working on, that you're learning how to do now. Little skills, little times. Look at what, look at what you are lacking. Look at, just think about, you know what? Just think about what is it that I fail at this last week or this last month. Don't give up on that thing that you failed on and keep going. It could be cooking. It could be gardening. It could have, be something to do with um, scripture study, or ministering, or being a good friend, um, uh, your marriage, you know, anything, any of those things. So, I want to go into the second thing that I have learned in the past few months about food storage. So, as, um, as I... I've talked with different people about food storage and the food storage that they have, and some people have donated some things to me for the purpose of making these videos, some older food storage that's like 10, 20 years old. Um, I even had a friend that had some that was around 50 years old, and most of that I um, ended up, well, they ended up not keeping. <laughs> I didn't take any of it. Um, but... When it comes to your food storage, I have noticed that a lot of people feel like if the can isn't severely dented, if it's not um, rusted, if it's not bulging, then it's still good. And in a way it is, because there's not like the bacteria, you know, it's still edible, yes, but once you, you get to those expiration dates, the, the um, quality, the nutritional value of your food starts decreasing hugely. And so if you've got food storage that's like 50 years old, 30, 40, 50 years old, and you're cooking and you're making meals with it, you could be filling your family's bellies with food, but they could be starving <laughs> because there's basically no nutrition in the food that you're giving them. And that was the problem that was happening with the yeast when I was, um, or the sourdough starter, when I was using the 20-year-old flour. There just wasn't enough nutrition in that flour for it to feed the, the yeast in the starter. So when I went and got new flour from the store, then it actually started working and feeding it and getting bubbly. So, so what do you do if you're someone who's like, oh my gosh, that's all my food storage is, it's like 40 or 50 year old food. Don't just go toss it all out. Yes, you should go through it and make sure that there aren't, you know, those damaged cans, things that are bulging because those are bad, those are poisonous. Don't keep those. But don't just go throw out all of the those cans. Start going through them. Yes, they need to be pulled off of your shelf, and you need to start rotating in new cans. But use these old cans to learn how to cook with food storage. <laughs> 
you you probably won't sit there and eat the whole meal that you made. You'll probably just taste it and say, okay, that's a decent meal I made, and then maybe toss the rest of it. But use it to learn how to cook with. Because then you're not trying to cook with new food storage that you bought just to learn how to do it. This is food that you can experiment with. That if you burn it, if it's a horrible meal, it tastes horrible, you, you couldn't figure out how to do this or that, um, it doesn't matter. It can go in the trash. And yeah, some things like making a sourdough starter, it may not work because there just isn't the value in it. But there are a lot of things that food that doesn't have that full nutritional value, it'll still cook. It'll still make the meal just fine. So, on that note, these additional videos that I'm going to make will, there will be probably a lot of cooking videos where I fail big time. Um, the, the next one I'm going to make is going to be, I'm going to try to make butter from the powdered milk from the church church food storage that may fail big time <laughs> so we're gonna see <laughs> but you know these are not gonna be videos like other ones where they're like you know staged kitchen they have everything all set up all really nice and the meal comes out perfect and beautiful looking um, because they have had years of experience behind them or they set it up ahead of time so that it would look beautiful and polished once they got in front of their camera. That's not what this is going to be. I could make it like that, but the point is to learn. The point is for me to learn. The point is for you to learn. And the point is for us to see and learn from our failures and know that, oh gosh, you know, every other woman or man on YouTube who makes a sourdough starter, they're making it beautiful and perfect and no problems. What's wrong with me? Why can't I do it? I'm just not good at it. I don't have the talent for it. I'm going to give up. That's not the case. I guarantee you. So many people fail and I can guarantee you that most of the people who have these videos, they failed hardcore too. They just had years of experience and they showed you their beautiful finished product at the end. And I'll be honest with you right now. The first video I made um, months ago, the cooking video, was uh, making a crepe dessert and dinner. So when I was making those crepes, I've made crepes before. It was years ago. Made them on my mission, and then when I got home, and the way that I remember making them was not working when I made the video. They, they kept clumping weird and burning, and I was like, I don't know, I don't know what's going on. So, and I didn't show you that in the video. I, um, what I ended up having to do was cutting the video and going to YouTube <laughs> to see how others make the crepes. And then I, uh, I came back and I showed you what I learned. And I realize now that I should have showed you the mistake and I should have showed you, I should have even told you, hey, I'm going to YouTube <laughs> to figure it out and then uh, let you see how it is that I failed and how it is that I, I fixed the problem. And so I apologize for that. And in the future, there I can guarantee you and I promise you there will be more fails coming your way. <laughs> so it's, it's gonna be a good, weird, crazy time probably. And uh, we're, we're gonna see uh, how the butter is gonna do, in fact. So I, I'm gonna make this one a separate video from the butter one so it's not too long, this video, but I'm, I'm actually gonna go over it right now and, uh, and do the butter and then I'll post the two separately. So we'll see how it all comes out. But thanks for listening to this, uh, this little bit of knowledge that I wanna share with you. And um, we'll be back in just, I'll be back in just a minute with the second video on making butter from the, uh, the church food storage. It's powdered milk, so it's, it's going to be interesting, I think. <laughs> All right, bye.